the archive. One may envision rooms and shelves stacked with boxes and cartons of old stuff, and yet for those who are patient enough to dig through it, the archive provides the precious opportunity to touch the past, to feel and learn from the experiences of once living people who now seem dead and buried deeply in the archive. But what if there was a way to bring the archive to life? The world is thinking wrong about race. This country insists upon judging the Negro because it does not know. What if one could make it breathe by his lowest and most vicious representatives? Speak an honest, straightforward exhibit, and even sing to us so that the archive becomes accessible to everyone. What would performing the archive look like? A performance that is not simply based on a true story, but one that allows us to come face to face. With things we thought were once dead and buried. This is what At Buffalo, a new musical we're developing, is all about. Using collections from over 30 archival institutions, At Buffalo performs the massive archive of the 1901 Pan American Exposition, the first World's Fair of the 20th century held in Buffalo, New York. Now, if you've heard of this fair, it might be because this is where then U.S. President William McKinley was assassinated. For nearly 17 years, I've stayed inside the gates in the archive of this fair, not only because of that story, but because of a real life and death racial drama that played out on the fairgrounds. Here, in a place that was like Disney World, the Olympics, carnivals, museums, all in one, there were three conflicting displays of what it meant to be black in the United States. The archive says white showmen presented. A savage black origin, in the form of 98 West and Central Africans living and performing war dances in a recreated village called Darkest Africa, and across the street, a happy slave life, in the form of 150 Southern black performers picking cotton, singing and dancing minstrel shows in a recreated antebellum attraction called Old Plantation. As a response, the Black Buffalo community championed the third display of blackness, the Negro exhibit, co-designed by African American scholar W. E. B. Du Bois. It curated photographs, charts, books, and more to show Black Americans as a high-achieving race capable of education and progress. When I first encountered this story. I understood from my own life experience what was at stake to have members of the African diaspora see each other like this. For me, as the child of immigrant parents from Ghana, West Africa, born in the American South, raised in Manhattan, Kansas, and, <laughs> and having attended the same elite school as Du Bois, I could see that the Buffalo Fair effectively pitted the Black Northerner against the Southerner. The educated against the uneducated, and the African American against the African. And I wanted to know how did these three distinct groups of Black folk navigate this experience? Unfortunately, the archive had answers to questions like this underneath racial caricature, conflicting information, and worse, silence. Still, I could hear. Musical melodies, and see dance numbers and the rhythms of the words coming off the pages of old newspaper articles, and learning that this World's Fair had music playing everywhere on its fairgrounds, I knew that live, immersive, spectacular musical theater with the latest technologies of our time is the closest experience that could bring the archival story of the 1901 fair out of boxes and into life stories. Like Tanya and Henrietta, a husband and wife vaudeville duo in love, who become at odds over performing these coon minstrel shows while striving for their five-dollar a week dream in the old plantation attraction. Like African businessman John Tevi, from present-day Togo, who must outwit the savage rules of the human zoo in which he has become trapped. And stories like Mary Talbert. Wealthy leader of the Black Buffalo elite, who must come to terms with the racial realities of her hometown. 
The dominant race in this country insists upon judging the Negro by his lowest and most vicious representative, like old plantation and darkest Africa, instead of by the more intelligent and worthy classes. When fair directors ignored Mary Talbert and the local Black Buffalo community's request to participate in the fair, newspapers say that Mary Talbert and her club of educated African American women held a rousing protest meeting. But the details of that meeting, even down to the fiery speech she gave, were not fully captured in the archive. So, a buffalo takes the essence of Mary's speech and turns it into song. We must, we are unanimous. We must, we are unanimous. We've got something to show. We're gonna teach a lesson in Buffalo. It would benefit the nation to see our growth since emancipation. Colored people should be represented in this Pan American exposition. It would benefit the nation to see our growth since emancipation. They made a great mistake Not to appoint someone from the race We must, we are unanimous We must, we are unanimous We must, we are unanimous Mary Talbert successfully demands that the Negro exhibit come to the fair and to have the Negro exhibit in Buffalo means that the musical must tell the story behind why Du Bois co-created it and why Mary and the black elite felt it was urgently needed. The world is thinking wrong about race. They killed Sam Hose for who they thought he was. And more men like him every day, more Negro men like him taken apart. And after that, that red ray, we could never be the same. A red ray cut across my desk the very day Sam's hands were laid to rest. And words alone withstand the laws unjust. Can words alone withstand the violence? Oh no. must change. That Buffalo reveals how the United States today stands at similar crossroads as 1901 America. Just as the name of Sam Holes filled newspapers back then, today's media carries the names of Oscar Grant, Jacqueline Culp, Trayvon Martin, Sandra Bland, and too many others. The 1901 Fair's legacies persist in more ways than we can imagine. Mary Talbert and the National Association of Colored Women started movements against lynching and the myth of black criminality, just as black women today started Black Lives Matter. And some of the same people who fought for and created the Negro exhibit, including Du Bois, 
、uh, came to Buffalo four years after the fair to start the Niagara Movement, which set the groundwork for the creation of the NAACP. It's not just black folks who had a peculiar experience at the 1901 fair. An official handbook informed fairgoers, "Please remember, once you get inside the gate, you are a part of the show." Performing the archive in at Buffalo allows audiences to ask themselves: Are we still inside the gates? And are we all still part of the show?